Today we're taking a look at Devil Engine, a game released back in 2019 by Protoculture Games and formerly published by Dangan Entertainment. More on that later. The game is currently available on Steam and Nintendo Switch, with a PlayStation 4 and arcade release of all things currently being worked on. Full disclosure, this video is just a passion project that I'm doing for my own enjoyment, and I am in no way sponsored to make this video, nor do I consider myself to be an expert in the shoot'em up genre. I'm just someone that wants to share my love of good video games onto others. The game kicks off with what has to be some of the smoothest pixel art animation I've ever seen. Your ship, the Andraste, is being refueled and rearmed as a set of alarms warn of a security breach, and suddenly your station begins its self-destruct sequence. The station is falling apart as the Andraste prepares to launch, and at the last possible moment you take off, just before the whole station goes up in an inferno. If you've never played a shoot -em up before, basically you play as a little spaceship and your goal is to blow up enemies while not getting blown up yourself. You can play through the game on either very easy or very hard difficulty. The very hard difficulty has significantly more enemies, more bullet patterns to dodge, and stronger bosses with second phases. Make no mistake though, just because the other difficulty is labeled very easy, the game is still quite challenging compared to most shoot 'em ups and it makes for a good first time run before going into the more complicated patterns found on very hard. Like seriously, some of the obstacles this game throws at you on the very hard difficulty are insane. Yet despite this, I always found myself getting just a little bit better after each run. Devil Engine, like most good shoot 'em ups, rewards practice and pattern memorization. That being said, I will never in my life one credit complete Devil Engine, even on the easiest setting. But that's fine because I still find myself having a blast every time I play it. The arcade mode is made up of five stages. The stages themselves each have their own theme, ranging from battling a fleet in deep space, a city freeway, flying over an ocean, to a maximum security lair. Each level has their own unique enemies and music, which all comes together to make every stage more memorable. For example, the enemies in the city level are land-based vehicles with an overall more militaristic aesthetic, as if you were fighting the city's law enforcement, whereas the jungle level has enemies based off animals like spiders, birds, and serpents. The music tracks also have their own distinct flair, with the first level soundtrack starting off upbeat with lots of electric guitar that gets you pumped up for the battles you're about to face, to the slightly more jazzy soundtrack of the second level that better fits with the city's nightlife aesthetic. As I was taking a closer look at the game's art design and style, there was something familiar about it that I couldn't quite describe. That was until I was browsing Netflix one day and I saw the thumbnail image for Neon Genesis Evangelion that I realized how similar the two are in terms of style. I don't know enough about visual arts to really explain what makes the two feel so familiar, but it's the small things like the font and the use of color where you can see how similar the two are. The fourth level boss even looks like Unit 2 from Evangelion, and the final boss reminds me of a certain angel from the show. I don't want to spoil the final boss, but let's say it very closely resembles one of Evangelion's most popular angels if you're familiar with the series. When you play as Andraste, you have access to three weapon types, which you can choose by picking up designated icons dropped by enemies. A wide hitting spread shot, a high damaging laser that requires precise aiming, and a low damage homing shot that tracks enemies, and it's especially useful for attacking around terrain. Each weapon type has their own bomb type as well. Spread Shot launches a volley of missiles that hit a wide area ahead of you. Homing Shot launches a smaller volley of missiles, but they surround your ship and home in on other enemies. And the Laser Bomb summons two extra lasers that fire straight ahead, dealing major damage before they eventually disappear. The Andraste can move at three speeds, which can be switched at the press of a button. The lowest speed is great for precise movements, like navigating tight spaces and through swarms of bullets. The highest speed is useful for broad emergency evasions. 
My only criticism with Andraste's speed mechanic is that I wish there was a bit more feedback for changing speeds. The only indication of what speed your ship is on is located at the top left corner of the screen. Taking your eyes away from the ship to look at your speed can potentially lead to getting hit by enemy attacks. A nice addition to avoid this issue would be to have the exhaust flame on the back of your ship change appearance as you adjust speeds. As is, the animation looks the same across all speeds, but having it be different depending on the speed could improve feedback. For example, a small yellow flame could signify the lowest speed, and a larger red flame could show the fastest. That way you can adjust your speed while keeping your eyes on your ship and on the enemies. Andraste's final mechanic is the burst function, where by pressing a single button you create a wave around your ship that absorbs enemy projectiles. This is a great tool for escaping tough patterns, but it comes at a cooldown, so make sure you're selective with your bursts, or else you'll just end up getting hit while it's recharging. Burst also reduces your score multiplier. This creates a great risk-reward system where you have to decide between clearing bullets to give you room to breathe or enduring the onslaught in favor of keeping your score up. You want to keep those score multipliers up because getting high scores also serves a purpose in Devil Engine. Most of the game's unlockables are tied to a lifetime score. The scores across all runs you play are added to a grand total, and reaching new milestones in that grand total unlocks bonuses like challenges and color variants. Some of the unlockables you get through your lifetime score include increasing your maximum continues, color filters ranging from VCR scan lines, a red and black filter emulating the Virtual Boy, and even a filter emulating the style of Zero Ranger, another fantastic shmup that I would love to do a video on sometime. There are alternate colors for enemy bullet patterns, my favorite being the slow strobe effect which I find most effective for making the bullets stand out from the background to ensure that nothing blends and I can see every danger on screen. I love the idea of having score serve a purpose aside from just leaderboard placement. Personally, I never really cared for leaderboards, so to have scores actually be tied to unlockables means that I've been in situations where I had to choose between keeping my time 6 multiplier in hopes of getting new content, or using my burst and sacrificing my multiplier in hopes of actually surviving. There's even the ability to change the soundtrack on the main menu, which replaces the default ambient noise with the more upbeat vapor soundtrack. Some of the more substantial unlockables include an extra level that acts as a prequel to the game's main story, a super challenging boss rush mode that gives you only three lives to take on all of the game's bosses in a random order, and challenge levels that include things like surviving an onslaught of enemies without shooting, playing a game of Breakout by using your burst to reflect the developer's logo against a brick wall, and an extra guest boss fight against the storm feeler himself, Zubaz. As a fan of the Super Best Friends channel, I thought it was a bittersweet moment to see the mascot of one of my favorite YouTube channels be included as a hidden boss in this game, as well as seeing their name in the credits. Rest in peace, Matt, Pat, Wooly, and Liam. The game really doesn't pull its punches when it comes to these challenges. Some of them are even more difficult than the game's hardest levels. The final challenge you unlock is something completely out of left field, however. I don't want to spoil the surprise for anyone interested in seeing it for themselves, but I'll just say that it was a great bit of fun in what has to be at this point an incredibly difficult game. By far, my favorite unlockable has to be a second playable ship. The... the... Skathech... Skathake? Which plays completely different from the Andraste. Instead of switching between different weapon types, with Skathech you always have a large but weak spread shot. Power-ups take the form of two drones that fire concentrated shots which can be aimed up and down. Instead of a bomb type, you have extremely powerful homing missiles that can lock onto multiple enemies and fire through walls. Instead of Andraste's burst function, you have a surge meter that builds up to three levels as you damage enemies. Releasing surge at level 1 adds a temporary shield that damages enemies and clears bullets. Level 2 fires a high damaging skittle beam. And at level 3 you just basically say screw the Geneva Conventions and you launch Hiroshima Remastered Edition that clears the screen and deals massive damage to all enemies and bosses. F is for fire that burns down the whole town, use for uranium! Bombs! And is for no survivors! When you like done! The surge function is your only way of dealing with enemy bullets, and it takes significantly longer to build than Andraste's burst function, which means you'll really need to focus more on dodging bullets instead of outright erasing them. 
Instead of having Andraste's three different speed settings, the Scathetch has a focus mode where your spread shot narrows and your movement slows to a crawl, even slower than Andraste's lowest speed, which is especially useful and satisfying for fine movement through a typhoon of bullets. The enormous spread shot, the screen clearing bomb, and the fine movement options make Scathetch's gameplay feel very similar to something you'd find in a shmup by Cave, for example Mushahime Sama and Dodonpachi. And it's a refreshing change of pace compared to Andrasse's more weapon power up focused gameplay, which is similar to something like Raiden 4. I think Devil Engine handles its two different ships masterfully. The styles of both ships come with their own strengths and weaknesses that alter how you approach an obstacle. Most shmups I've played that have more than one playable ship usually only go so far as cosmetics, or only changing their main weapon or their speed. But Devil Engine has layers of unique mechanics with each ship, which requires making new strategies for the same levels. I only wish that both ships were playable from the start. Instead, Scathetch is locked behind a lifetime score milestone, meaning that you'll have to play as Andraste for a pretty long time before playing the second ship. I think it'd be a lot more fun to have the player experiment of each style of gameplay rather than limiting them to just one. I'm perfectly okay with unlockables being tied to things such as extra continues, challenges, and cosmetic changes. However, only one ship for the majority of the gameplay can make each run feel just a little bit more repetitive, whereas having a second ship could be that nice change of pace to keep new runs feeling fresh. If you really want to play Scathetch from the get-go, you can enter a cheat code in the main menu to unlock it. On the PC version, hold F5 and press Enter, and that will take you to a password screen. On the Switch version, to get to the password screen you press up, down, up, down, L, R, Z, L, Z, R. Once you're on the password screen, enter True Arena and Scathage will be playable. While we're looking at passwords, other notable passwords include Chen Mode, which replaces all the in-game sound effects with Goose Honking. <laughs> Bit Summit Volume 6 starts you playing the demo that was made available during the 2018 Bit Summit, but be warned that doing this cheat will set your language to Japanese, so make sure you know where to change your languages in the options, or else you'll be fiddling around in the options screen hoping to find it. And lastly, Ignition Demo, which starts you off playing the first level of the upcoming expansion DLC, Devil Engine Ignition, which is currently in development. I love having a little teaser for a yet-to-be-released DLC as part of the main game. The developer also mentioned having a bunch more password codes that they have yet to release, so I look forward to seeing any more fun extras, even if they are something as simple as replacing sound effects. As great as all of Devil Engine's main gimmicks and attractions are, there's actually a lot of little touches that I really want to take a moment to appreciate. When you begin each run, you're put into a small tutorial area where you can see all the game's controls and test out the mechanics in a safe environment before being thrust into the main game. I love the inclusion of this practice screen because there's nothing worse than starting a new shoot'em up and not knowing which button does what. You press a button thinking it's your main weapon only to waste one of your limited number of bombs, so I think this practice screen is a great way to familiarize yourself with the game's mechanics. I like how the game makes snide little remarks about playing on very easy mode, even including a small pink label in the corner just to let you and anyone watching know that you're playing the game on the easiest setting, like a badge of shame. It reminds me of all the funny difficulty labels on other games like the Wolfenstein series. I love how in-depth you can customize the game's visuals through the options menu, the ability to dim the background and show hitboxes and outlines on your ship, all in various colors. It can greatly help the more serious players focus purely on the necessary gameplay elements and to improve their gameplay. Looking back on the footage that I captured to make this video, I was able to see so many little touches that I never noticed before. Like how before the fourth stage boss fight starts, you can see a small object darting through the enemy battleships in the background and destroying them all with ease, and then when the boss fight shows up, all the flying ships in the background change to floating wreckages. I love how the soundtrack to the challenge mode continues playing even as you restart challenges and go back to the menu to pick different challenges. That way the song doesn't get repetitive due to constantly restarting. Compare this to something like the Bloody Palace mode in Devil May Cry 5, where you'd constantly hear the first 10 seconds of the song just because the song kept restarting with each new level. Some of you may be wondering why I said the game was formerly published by Dangan Games, and why of all games I would decide to review Devil Engine now. The reason is because of recent legal developments between the developer Protoculture and the publisher Dangan, where Dangan was not giving Protoculture their fair share of the revenue. In response, Protoculture halted the development of the expansion DLC Devil Engine Ignition, and its release was postponed indefinitely. 
That is until January 12th, 2021, when Protoculture announces that they resolved their issues and ended their contract of Danjin to both parties' satisfaction. This means that the developers who made the game are now getting their fair share of the profits. So hey, if this game looks like it be something up your alley, now's a great time to get it and support the indie game market. I love the shoot 'em up genre, but sadly it's a genre that big game developers don't seem to care about anymore. The fact that shoot 'em ups are still being made in the indie market scratches that particular itch that big game publishers just don't seem to capitalize on. Devil Engine's well worth your time if you're into arcade shoot 'em ups like I am, and congratulations to Protoculture for solving their legal issues with Dangan, and I look forward to seeing what they come up with in the future, and I look forward to seeing how Devil Engine Ignition turns out. You can pick up Devil Engine on Steam and Nintendo Switch, with a PlayStation 4 release coming later. If you liked this video, I'd really appreciate your feedback in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.